Hello Calculus Kids, this is Mr. Bean, and today we're going to talk about accumulation functions again, but this time the behavior of the graphs of an accumulation function. Now this is actually going to be kind of nice and easy for you because we've already learned everything about this. We're just kind of putting some things together that we learned in Unit 5. So as a reminder, let's just remind ourselves that this thing here is an accumulation function. So that is our accumulation function where you're going from some constant up to an unknown variable. And then just remember that it's derivative. So the derivative of capital F is equal to little f. So this thing gets plugged in. And then you might have to use chain rule. If it was something more than just an x, you have to times it by the derivative of that upper bound. Okay, so we've already covered all that. So now what we're going to do is talk about what is the behavior of these accumulation functions, this capital F of x thing. So what is, when is f of x increasing? So f of x is increasing when its derivative is greater than zero. Right? We've done this before. Something's increasing if its derivative is positive. And so then it's decreasing if its derivative is negative. Okay, so there's nothing new with this except for the fact that we have this capital F. So what I want you to do real quick is just pause the video, fill out the rest of this. If you're not too sure about it, then just wait till you see my answers. But see if you can do this on your own real quick. So pause now, fill the rest of this column. Don't worry about this part yet. And there's what you should have come up with. Something about with, with f prime changing signs. Uh, when it's maximum, it goes from positive to negative and then so forth. Concave up, concave down. And then point of inflection, second derivative is going to change signs. So what we want to uh, put together is that now, if we have an accumulation function, its derivative is this. So in other words, we could say, instead of just saying capital F prime of x is greater than 0, we can say little f of x is greater than 0. Or in this case, little f of x is less than zero. Now just make these answers correlate it over here to match up what you think they would look like here. So pause and just get the rest of these written down. And you should have this on there now. Okay, so let's take this and now try a problem. We have an accumulation function going on. It's just from a to x, some, some unknown constant. And we have the graph of f. So what we want to know is when is the relative minimum, what is a relative minimum of g? Where is it happening? So we're looking for the x values. Not what is it, but where is it? So remember, here is g. So in order for this to happen, I'm going to write this over here. I need to figure out when is g prime changing from, if I'm a minimum, I'm going from negative to positive. I'll just put a little plus sign. So I'm going to go from minus to positive for g prime. Well, that's the same thing as g prime is the same thing as f. You see, f here is equal to g prime. This graph is g prime. So if you can correlate those two things together, this is actually just a repeat of unit 5. But you have to understand that the derivative of g is just this thing right here. So when, does that, when do we have a relative minimum? We have a relative minimum right here when it's going from negative to positive. Okay, now this is the only time that I don't give you a nice easy x value. I checked all the other problems. I just didn't want to redo my entire notes portion of this. So we're just going to do an approximation. I won't make you do an approximation on the rest of the problems you practice. Uh, so that I'm just going to say it's about 5.4. But the other ones, it will be obvious. It'll be a nice straight line or it'll go through an obvious point on the graph. Okay, let's go on to relative maxima. So a relative maximum is when g prime is going to change from positive to negative. So that's what we're looking for. And or in other words, when f is going from positive to negative, which is right there at x equals 3. Okay, now concavity. So I'm looking for when is g double prime positive. Or in other words, that's the same thing as saying when is f prime positive. So if I want to take the f, if f equals g prime, then f prime equals g double prime. That's how they relate. You just take one more step on the derivative. So I'm looking for when is the first derivative positive, or in other words, when is the slope of f positive? So here's f. When is the slope positive? Right here, the slope is positive. That's going up right there. So our answer would be on the interval from 4 to, what did I, was that? 6. And then we'll do the same idea with concave down, just when is the second derivative negative, or when is f prime negative, and that's going to be this line segment right here, so from 2 to 4. And then our point of inflection. So remember, points of inflection are where g prime changes sign. So I want g prime to either go from positive to negative or negative to positive, but that means you have to correlate that with f prime. So 
it's when does f prime change signs? So when does f prime go from negative to positive, positive to negative? That's going to happen here. We have g, the slope here is zero, then the slope's negative, then the slope's positive, and the slope is zero. So this is the only place right there where f prime is going to change signs, or in other words, when the second derivative changes signs. So that is at x equals four. And the last part of this problem is, what is the maximum value of g on this interval one to five? So if I go from, I'm gonna erase some of this so you can see it. If I go from one to five, where is the maximum value occur? So this is all positive and it's gaining. And then here's our relative max. So we already figured out that this was a relative max. So I wanna figure out right here, what's the value? If I know that g of one equals five, then, I want to figure out at x equals three. So at x equals three, that's not the answer. That's because I'm looking for a maximum value. That's just the x point. Okay, so this problem actually, I probably shouldn't have the exact same directions because it says find the following x values. But here it says, what's the maximum value? So I'm looking for a y value. So I'm going to start off at five and I want to add to it the accumulation between one and three of little f of t uh, with respect to t. So this is what I'm trying to figure out. I take this starting at one and I am going to add how much it's accumulated, the area under this curve here. So this area is a one, that's a one. This is two blocks split in half, so that's also a one. So I'm adding a total area of three. So I take my five and I add this area under the curve is a three. So then my answer is eight. And that's how you do with these. Last type of problem, and these are kind of cool. It's gonna be new to you, but it's not too bad. And that is we're looking for an X value where G has a relative max. So as soon as I see this, I just have to go to my thought process of what creates a relative max. If we get G prime changing from positive to negative, then that's when we're gonna have a relative max. So we then need to examine G prime of X. So what does that equal? The derivative of this integral is the upper bound gets plugged in. F of the upper bound of x over two plus five. And then you have to multiply it using the chain rule. So we got to multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is just one half. Derivative of x over two is one half. Now that we have this, we're trying to figure out when does it equal zero? When does this thing equal zero? It, well, F is going to equal zero when we have x equals three or x equals five and a little bit, 5.4-ish. Well, this is the only one that's the max, right? This one's the minimum. So what I'm going to do is say, this happens here, let me write this. I can multiply both sides by two and then it gets rid of the one half. So I have x over two plus five equals zero. So this is going to happen only if this part of it equals three. If that's three, then this statement is true. So now I can write out a new equation and say that x over two plus five has to equal three. If I have that, then I have a relative maximum. And then you just solve it. x over two equals negative two. So x is going to equal negative four. And sorry if I did not give you enough room on your piece of paper there. But that's how you do these. So if you're not sure what I just did, rewatch that again. The important part is what I underlined in red to be able to figure out what you have to plug make set that equal to what this thing has to equal would be a three for this problem okay that's everything so rock that mastery check and then for those of you who uh who are on the schedule for a test you have a test next step so good luck on that one as well all right see you in the next lesson